What's up my Copilot Conjurers? Microsoft Copilot Pro is here and I'm going to share with you my top five Copilot Pro superpowers that'll help you transform the way you work. So let's get started. First things first, what is Microsoft Copilot Pro and who is it targeted for? Copilot Pro is a new product targeted towards individual users. So if you have a Microsoft 365 personal or family account, you can add on Copilot Pro for a $20 a month license, and that'll give you access to all of the generative AI Copilot features. Now there's a separate product if you're a business and you have a Microsoft 365, say E5 account, and you wanna be able to add on some Copilot capability inside of your office products and some things like I'm showing today that you can add on for $30 a user a month. So two different distinct products, just different audiences based off of if you're an individual user wanting to use some of this capability or if you're a business wanting to roll this out to your users. But today I'm gonna to be focusing on Copilot Pro and how it can improve your personal productivity in work and your daily life. So without further ado, let's dive into our first superpower, the word wizard. With Copilot Pro, you get a built-in word wizard. This means you never have to stare at a blank Word document wondering how to get started. Now, if you create a new blank document, when you open Word, you'll see the option to draft with Copilot. This means I can put in any prompt to tell it what I'm wanting to write. So maybe I wanna write a book on Power Apps and I don't know how to get started. So I can say draft an outline for a book on getting started with Power Apps and click generate. And that'll go and take my prompt and generate an outline for me using generative AI. So you see we have getting started with Power Apps, a practical beginner's guide. It has an intro and is creating all of the different chapters that I might wanna include in my book with high level bullet points. And now I have a really good starting point for my book. I don't know about you, but I am that typical person that I will get hung up on where to start and seeing that blank page is overwhelming. So having something like this built right into Word where I can just give it a prompt and it helps kind of push me over that initial hurdle is huge. But it goes beyond just helping you draft new documents. We can use this to tweak documents also. So if I don't really like this introduction, I can highlight this text and we have a Copilot button to the left-hand side. I can select that and I have the option to rewrite. And this will give me some other options to consider. So here's one, two, and then a third option. And maybe I don't really like any of these and I wanna change it. So one thing we can do is change the tone by clicking this filter button. So right now the tone is set to neutral. Maybe I want it to be a little more casual. So I can change the tone to casual and say regenerate. And now it gives me a few more options to choose from so I can select one and then I can either replace or insert below. So I'll replace this selected text. And there you go, I'm already tweaking my document with Copilot also. Another thing that I love this for is if you have an existing document. So let's go open up, say this request for a proposal. In the toolbar, we can open up our Copilot here. And this is one that I really love and saves me a ton of time. So say you get a document that is 50 plus pages or just a really long document and you really don't wanna read through all that. You can just ask Copilot to summarize this doc and it will take all of the information and give you a high level, easy to read summary so that you don't have to read through the whole thing you can get the high level bullet points. So it's almost there. See, sometimes it can take a little bit depending on how long the document is to get you this AI generated summary. So I'll often go refill my coffee or something while this is running, come back and then I'll have my AI summary. All right, and there you go. It summarized the main ideas and then each of the major headings, it's summarizing those sections for me as well. And it provides references. So if you expand this out, it shows you where it got all the information from. And I can tweak the summary too. So maybe that's a little long, so I can say make the summary shorter. So say I've created a long document, but I wanna send a TLDR to my boss with the summary. I can use Copilot within Word to do this. So now it's shortening a bit that summary, and now I can copy and paste that into my email to my boss, and I'm good to go. Now, the other thing I love when reviewing documents is the ability to ask it specific questions about the document. So I can say, what is the project goal? for example, might be something relevant since this is a project proposal. And there you go, it's created a summary. The goal of Project Unicorn is to develop a VR platform that uses AI to create immersive environments. So I get a nice summary of what the goal is without having to read through the whole thing. So I kid you not when I say I use this on a daily basis, practically. Another thing you'll notice in the prompt window here, you have the option to view prompts. So if you're not quite sure what you can ask Copilot in Word, we have these prompts. So we can ask it things like create, 
And then it gives you some ideas like create a paragraph, create an outline. You can also ask it to understand. So we looked at the summarize example, but we can also ask it what are the pros and cons and maybe what important deadlines are. So this view prompt section is a really good tool to get some ideas of what you can ask your copilot. And the other cool thing that I like, especially if I'm using this on my phone, is the ability to use your microphone. So I can just enable my microphone and tell it what I'm wanting to do and do the speech to text to put that into the copilot. So it saves you from typing a lot. And that brings us to our second superpower, the slide sorcerer. Copilot Pro is making it easier than ever to create engaging PowerPoint slides. Let's create a blank presentation and see Copilot in action. Similar to what we just saw in Word, we can click on the Copilot tab, and if we're starting with a blank presentation, we can tell Copilot what we're wanting to build. So I can say, create a 10 slide presentation about alpacas. And this is using generative AI to not only get details about my subject of alpacas, but also get relevant images to include in the slide deck as well and is determining the best order to present the information. So a lot going on behind the scenes here. All right, so we have our introductory slide. It looks like it embedded a video. I'm not sure what a bunch of fans at a concert have to do with alpacas, but it's pretty cool. Maybe they're just excited about alpacas. But if we look at the deck, we see we have a slide about alpaca wool and some information there, which is pretty cool about it being hypoallergenic, naturally water repellent. We have info on how they breed, their diet, their behavior, very intelligent animals and social. Some relevant info about their health, it looks like, farming, conservation efforts, and some fun facts here. What is a presentation without fun facts? I love it. Anything that I could think of that we want to talk about alpacas, it looks like it's included for us and with some really cool relevant visuals too. I can work with Copilot to keep tweaking my presentation. Maybe I want to include information about the average life expectancy of an alpaca. So I can say, add a bullet point to the alpaca health slide that lists their average life expectancy. All right, so not only does it let me know a bullet point has been added, it gives me the information here, which is cool. And so now if I go over to that slide, it looks like it added that bullet point for me. So we can use this for giving it a subject and having it create a deck outline for us, getting the information that we need. We can also have it add specific slides or even specific bullet points like we looked at, but we can also use this again for existing presentations to ask it information about the deck. So if this is the first time I was looking at this deck about alpacas, I could ask it specific questions like what do alpacas eat? So it gives me the information that they're herbivores and I can see the reference to where it got that information from the deck. And you'll see below, it's even giving me some suggestions of things I could ask. So I could maybe ask what is alpaca wool used for and select that option and it will ask the copilot that question for me. So definitely give this superpower a try to spice up your slides. Our next superpower is the Excel Enchanter. If we click on the copilot button in this Excel document, we'll see what we can do with copilot in Excel. One big caveat of using copilot in Excel is that your data has to be formatted as a table for it to be able to do anything for you. So this one is a little bit more limited than Copilot in Word or PowerPoint, but there are still some good use cases. So as soon as I select into this table, now all these capabilities light up. We can use this to get information and ask it questions about the data. So this was a really long spreadsheet. I could say how many items are there? And it will do a simple count rows for me and get that information, which is really nice. The other cool thing is it can help you write formulas. So I can ask Copilot to add a column for first name, taking the first name from the name field as the value. So that's asking it to create a formula that can extract out the first name from our name column. So we'll see if it can do that for us and add it just by me telling it what I want. Okay, so you see it suggested a formula that will do what I want. It didn't actually insert it because it wants me to verify the suggestion first. So if that looks right, I can just simply hover over the insert column and it will give me a preview of what that will look like and I can verify the data. So it looks like it's getting all that information correctly. So if it looks good, I can say insert and now that's in my Excel table. This is pretty awesome and saves a ton of time. And the other thing that I really love about this is this explain formula. So if you click that, it doesn't just blindly have you add it in there. You can better understand what's actually going on. And we might as well round this out. So I'll say add a column called last name that takes the last name from the name column. So we might want to split those out if we're putting this in a database or something like that. And there you go. There's a formula. Same thing. We hover over, see the preview. 
click insert column. And now we got our new columns just by describing what we want. And depending on the data that you have in Excel, say maybe you have a financial spreadsheet, you can have it do some analyzing for you, like get the sum, get the most common item, whatever it might be. And it shows you some different prompts that you might wanna use. Definitely check it out again, slightly limited because it has to be formatted in the table, but there's still a lot you can do with the Copilot in Excel. Our fourth superpower is the email enchanter. That's right, we have a Copilot built into Outlook. Let me show you my favorite use case for Copilot and Outlook. So say you've drafted an email. In this case, I unfortunately am leaving a negative review for Contoso Hotel, just didn't live up to my standards, but I don't wanna to be too harsh and just wanna get my point across and give them the feedback. So I can take this email, we can click on our Copilot button in the toolbar, and then we have this option for coaching with Copilot. So this helps us take an existing email and write better with Copilot. So I can click on the coaching and it's going to analyze my email and give me some feedback on how I might improve it. And that fast, we have the results from our Copilot coach. It gives you a breakout of tone, the sentiments and your clarity. So for tone, it says I could be less harsh. So I kind of knew that going in. So it's letting me know that my tone is pretty negative and angry and might not elicit the response that I'm hoping for from the hotel. And it's giving me some helpful suggestions. So instead of the word appalling, inexcusable and perplexing, maybe I should soften the blow and say unsatisfactory, disappointing or surprising. And then here it gives me some information about the sentiment. So it's letting me know I'm not acknowledging the hotel's perspective and might make them feel defensive or unappreciated. Again, with a suggestion on how I might convey that message. And then finally, clarity. So for clarity, it's telling me that I'm a little vague and I'm not giving enough detail about the specific issues that I have, which is good to know. So lots of things that in the heat of the moment writing this, albeit anger-filled email, I might not have caught. And it's good to have this unbiased perspective and details before I send this message. So I use this all the time. So now I can go make some tweaks to this, run with the coach again and reevaluate. Speaking of making tweaks, I don't have to do that on my own. If we go to that Copilot button again, I can say draft with Copilot and I can paste in the text that I had with my email and I can give it different instructions, but also you'll notice this button here for generation options. So I can have it change the tone for me. So right now it's detecting a direct tone, but if I wanna make it maybe a little bit more neutral, I could do that and we'll say medium length and now I'll just tweak my prompt. So before the text, I'll say, take this hotel feedback and make the tone less harsh and the feedback more detailed and constructive. And then we have our text below. So now I can say generate and it will go through and take my instructions along with the change in tone and length and apply that to the text for me. And there we go, it's created a draft and looks like it has softened the tone of the email quite a bit and added a few details there. So if I like it, I can keep it. And let's try that coaching again and let's see if that improved any of the outcomes. And one of the things I see it added that on the positive side, the location was convenient. So kind of that sandwich there of good, bad, good. So the coach is saying that I still could be a little bit more polite, but this is negative feedback. So you can only do so much there. And apparently I'm just not positive enough. I only mentioned two positive aspects. I could mention more. And then I guess for clarity, it's getting a little long now. So maybe I want to do some bullet point. So still some good information from the coach that I might consider and tweak it further. Otherwise I can just send it off. So if you're like me and you tend to overanalyze the emails that you send and spend a lot of time crafting and changing things, this is really, really helpful. And now we've arrived to our last Copilot Pro superpower and that's the creativity catalyst get answers and spark ideas. We've explored the Copilots within the different Office products that we get with Microsoft Copilot Pro, but we also have Copilot Pro itself at our fingertips. And it's worth noting, there is a free version of Copilot. So in both the free version and the pro version, there's actually a Copilot app that you can install on your iOS or Android device and be able to interact with the Copilot that way, as well as on the web, like we're seeing here. And with the free version, you get access to GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo during non-peak times. You can create AI images up to 15 a day with Microsoft Designer and use plugins and GPTs. The main thing that you're getting with the pro version is A, the co-pilots that we just saw in the Office products, but also within Copilot Pro itself, you're getting access to GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo during accelerated times, so not just off-peak hours. And all that means is you can get things done faster. 
less waiting time. And for the images in Microsoft Designer, you can get up to 100 a day, so a lot more capacity. I use Copilot for so many different things. It's replaced a lot of the things that I normally would have went into a search engine and searched for. I just asked Copilot for those answers. So if I just had a random factoid I was curious about, like what is the speed of light? That's something that Copilot can easily answer. And you see it's using GPT-4, Turbo in this case, and it's coming back with an answer. And that answer has references to where it got the information too. Another thing I use it for though, is its image search capability. I mentioned that there's a mobile application that you can use in this. So a lot of times I'll be maybe at a store or shopping somewhere and I'll see something I really like, but I wanna make sure that I get the best deal. So I'll demonstrate this on the desktop, but you get a lot of value on this when using it on the mobile device. You can click on this, add an image. So browsing at the store, I really want this Stanley cup. So I'll upload that image. And then in the prompt, I'll ask it, find me the best deal on this, please. And yes, I like to say please and thank you in my prompts when I can. So it's looking and it's analyzing that image that I pasted it in and it's determining what it is and then going out to the internet and doing a search to try to find the best deal. So you see it's updating in real time. It's recognized that that is a Stanley travel mug and it's doing a search for that. And it's already coming back with some options. So now we see all of these shopping options for that mug. So I use it for that, but then I also use it just to identify what something is. So I might be out and I see a bird or a plant or something, and I wanna know what that is. It can do an image search and recognize what that is as well. And this goes beyond simple searches and answers. It can help you create things too. When I'm not doing tech stuff, I'm a musician and I write songs and play in a band. So one of the things that I've been using lately is the plugins that you have inside of Copilot. And one of those plugins is Suno. So with Suno, you can actually make songs with AI. So I can say something like use Suno to create a pop rock anthem about the power platform. And with that, it'll go recognize what I put in. It'll use that plugin. So you see it's using Suno right now. And there we go. So it's generated some lyrics. And if I just wait a few more minutes, it's actually going to generate the music too. This is really cool. Not necessarily a business case, but something that I use personally and just a good use case of how you can utilize these plugins. So you see Suno isn't the only plugin we have. We have a specific plugin for shopping. So in that scenario, when I was trying to find the Stanley Cup, we can enable the shop plugin and that would help us better do some shopping by asking questions, uploading images. There's also a plugin for OpenTable to book restaurants, Kayak for searching flights, Instacart for recipes and groceries and a search plugin that's automatically enabled that lets us get information from the internet. And these plugins are something that are evolving and new ones will be added eventually too. So keep an eye out on this plugin section to add more capability to Copilot. Now, the other thing that we have access to inside of Copilot Pro is Microsoft Designer, which gives us the ability to create AI generated images. I use this a lot for adding images to my PowerPoint decks, for creating promotional posters, thumbnails for my YouTube video, you name it. So many use cases that you have for AI generated images. We can do this directly from Copilot here if we wanted to, or we can go to Microsoft Designer. So I can say something like create a banner image that is AI themed for my YouTube channel. And now this will use Microsoft Designer to come back with some image options for me. All right, so it's generated some options. They look pretty cool. And it looks like it picked up that I wanted it for my YouTube channel and actually put that in the image. Spelled it wrong in some of them. I will say spelling and adding text is still not perfect in, in these AI generated images. So I try to avoid it where I can. But this one is pretty cool. So it has AI in it and it has binary. So that's a pretty cool one. I might go with that. I can just download that and use it wherever I want to. So I use this one a lot as well, and you have additional capacity with Copilot Pro. What you've seen is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Copilot Pro. And I just thought of another thing I forgot to mention when we we're talking about Word Copilot. We can do things like in this stakeholder section where I have the bullet points, I can hover over that, select Copilot, and actually visualize specific pieces of information as a table. So not only does it help you create information and rewrite, but we can do some formatting and rearrange things in a tabular format easily. 
So the possibilities are really endless with what you can do with Copilot Pro. Again, this is for personal use. If you're a business and wanna roll this out, we have all of this functionality plus more in the Copilot license there, which is $30 a user a month. So check that out. I'll make sure to include a link in the video description for more information about Copilot and how you can go out and buy that if you're interested. Try it out, let me know what you think, and I would love to hear how Copilot is changing how you work. Leave a note in the comments and let me know. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click that subscribe button and be on the lookout for more Copilot videos on the Copilot Chronicles. See you next time.